everybody. Welcome to a new YouTube video. I'm excited to talk about today's topic. As always, for those of you guys that are new to the channel, I'm so happy to have you here in this community. If this is your first time, welcome. My name is Dr. Elise Tercy and I practice holistic medicine here on Long Island. And this channel really is devoted to all things holistic wellness related. We talk about everything from period pain, weight gain, hormone issues, diet, all the things that are applicable to your health. For those that are veterans, of course, welcome back as always. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I really wanted to bring light to the topic today because it actually came from a recent conversation I had with somebody at the gym. And I thought to myself, wow, this is so important for you guys to, to know about because there's not a lot of information about this out there when it comes to healing. And the topic is regarding weight loss and why it feels difficult to lose weight even when your nutrition looks good. A lot of people get very confused. They share with me, I don't understand. I'm eating very well. I'm sleeping seven, eight hours per night. I'm kind of doing all the things I thought were going to be supportive for weight loss, but I'm not progressing. I don't have any tissue changes happening. My body is not reconstituting or kind of recomping. I'm not able to lose weight. I'm not able to build muscle. Something is wrong. And I really want to hone in on this, that when you feel like something might be wrong, it's because there is something. And I don't mean wrong in the sense of, of scary wrong, but there's probably something going on in the background that is keeping you in the cycle of saying, I don't understand what's happening here. And uh, really, I want to talk to you guys about what that something is. Probably having some issues with weight loss is because you have an inflammatory process. And I want to hone on a little bit on what that term means because I feel like inflammation is this term that gets thrown out there and it's a very real concept, but it's also a very general and vague word. You know, inflammation, what does that mean, inflammation? What, what's going on there? Well, an inflammatory process is a process where your body is trying to rectify and bring yourself back into homeostasis and it's struggling to do that because many reasons. So just for an example, there could be inflammation in your thyroid gland. And that is one of the reasons why we don't lose weight. So we'll talk about top four reasons people struggle with composition changes or feeling like no matter what they eat, they just can't shift how they look. Number one is thyroid dysfunction. We can talk about inflammation in the thyroid. What does that actually mean? It means that my thyroid gland, which is a little butterfly gland that lives right here in my neck, is undergoing some problems where it's not producing enough thyroid hormone, whether that be T3 or T4, or it's being attacked by some type of virus that's causing problems with the production of thyroid hormone. And so when we have that inflammatory process happening, it's a barrier to weight loss. And the reason why is because the thyroid gland is really producing all of the hormones that are involved with metabolism. And a lot of women are like, I think my metabolism is slow. What is the deal with that? Another way to say, I think my metabolism is slow is to say that my cells aren't working as efficiently or effectively as they should be. And because of that, my tissue is struggling to actually do its job. It's just not as available to do its job. Now with thyroid horm hormone issues in, in particular, whether that be hypothyroidism or Hashimoto's thyroiditis or a combination of the two, because you can have, you can have Hashimoto's and hypothyroid independent of another, or they can be combined. And I'm not gonna dive into this in this video because it's a little bit of a confusing topic. I find that when I try to explain this to patients, I get this stare of like, I don't get it. And I understand it's a little bit of a complicated process, but you can just be hypothyroid, you can just be Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and you can be both at the same time. All three possible options are available. Nonetheless, across the board, regardless of which one you're dealing with, it does mean that you have inflammation in your thyroid and that will be a barrier to weight loss no matter what you eat. You can literally sit down to a plate of ice cubes and drink water all day and your scale would go up. Because there is inflammation in a governing gland that's involved with how quickly my cells move, how quickly my digestive system moves, how quickly my tissues move, 
it basically causes the body to go slow when we have thyroid stress. Everything gets slowed down and we have problems moving our bowels. Typically we get more constipated. We have problems with our energy. We're just finding that we're tired all the time. We have problems staying awake. Actually what happens is that when we should be awake, we're tired and when we should be asleep, we're wired. That can happen with thyroid stress. So thyroid dysfunction is the number one reason why you might have issues with weight gain or trying to change your body composition and it's just not possible. The second possible option and the most common is you have an autoimmune condition. By default, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the autoimmune version of thyroid stress. Hypothyroid does not have an autoimmune component to it unless it's being driven by Hashimoto's. But if you have an autoimmune condition, what that means is that your tissues are attacking themselves. And that can happen anywhere in the body. We name it, we call it, oh, if it's in my thyroid, that's called Hashimoto's. Oh, if it's in my pancreas, we call that diabetes. Oh, if it's in my immune system, it could be a number of things, whether it be lupus, SLE, it could be um, so many different inflammatory conditions, Sjogren's, it could be dry eyes. Um, it could be a lot of different things in terms of which tissue is being involved or which tissue is being attacked. Really what happens with the body is it's going to prioritize, do we help this person change their tissue in terms of weight or are we trying to fix and quiet the fire that's happening? The body's gonna preferentially try to fix the fire burning inside, which is the autoimmune process. And so whenever you're having an underlying autoimmune condition, multiple sclerosis, all the different things um, that can be applicable, you will have problems by default with weight issues. Okay, you will absolutely have problems. Your body is not prioritizing weight as the concern right now. It's prioritizing helping your immune system really figure out what's going on and re-regulate and remodulate and kind of bring yourself back into a homeostatic position. And until the inflammation process from the autoimmune condition is addressed, unfortunately, you won't have a lot of success with tissue composition changes. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and say you can't have any result. That's not true. You can, even with thyroid stress, you can change your tissue. You can put on muscle, you can lose weight, but it will be harder. Your ability and availability to do that definitely drops down when you have these problems. So number two, if we wanna go back as a little recap, we said thyroid problems absolutely cause problems with weight issues. Number two is having any type of autoimmune condition happening. And so we'd wanna know about that because by default, if we don't address your autoimmunity, we can't fix or get you into the goal that you want without looking at that. Even with nutrition, guys, even if you're saying I'm in a caloric deficit, which means I'm eating less calorie than I'm burning, even if you're saying I'm barely consuming food, a lot of women out there think the only answer to changing their tissue to be lower in weight is by restriction. And restriction is not the answer when there's metabolic dysfunction. Restriction doesn't work when there's metabolic dysfunction. Number three, if we wanna talk about it in terms of numbers, we can talk about hormone issues, hormone imbalances, where maybe we have too high estrogen, we have too high dihydrotestosterone, maybe we have too low progesterone or too low pregnenolone, maybe we have too high estradiol or all three derivatives of estrogen, any type of sex hormone imbalance, that would be number three, sex hormone imbalance is going to be a culprit behind issues with changing your tissue type as well. And this is my conversation I was speaking to when I shared with you guys earlier, I was speaking to a woman in the gym and she said, I don't understand, I'm here, I'm putting in the effort, I'm putting in the time, I'm trying to eat better, and I've cut out sugar, I've cut out bread, I've cut out pasta, and nothing is happening. <clears throat> what's going on? I said, there's something going on behind the scenes that we need to address. By default, how do we go there? Like, what are the steps that we take? Often, it's just symptoms. We know from symptoms. We can be having heart palpitations. We can be having joint pain. Those are some symptoms with low progesterone. We could be having uh, body hair growth around the nipple, the areola, or on our chin. We could be having acne. We could be holding what's called visceral adiposity or weight gain in our midsection. That's a cortisol response. That can happen from sex hormone imbalance. And so the way that we often test for all of these things is we look at blood work. Can we look at blood work for everything from an autoimmune perspective? Yes, double-stranded Smith antibodies, double-stranded DS-DNA antibodies, 
anti-Rho antibodies, anti-SB antibodies. We can look at your HSCRP, your inflammatory markers, your ESR, which is called your urethral sedimentation rate. We can go looking at your sex hormones. We can go looking at a full thyroid profile. T3 free in total, T4 T in, uh, free in total, TSH, reverse T3, and then the two antibodies, antithyroid peroxidase and anti-TPO antibodies, antithyroglobulin antibodies. So we can look in your blood work if we feel from a symptoms perspective that, hey, wait a second, something's not right. Something is just not right. And I tell my women all the time because we're so innately intuitive, if you feel something is wrong, it's because it is. If you feel something is wrong, it's because it is. You know, you know your body. You've been living in this vessel for so long. And so I really encourage you that if you think that there's a problem, you know, really look into that. Kind of use that as an invitation to look at what is going on. Insulin issues would be number four on the list. So having any type of insulin resistance that does include polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS, that does include prediabetes, metabolic syndrome, syndrome X, people that are having issues with high glucose, high blood sugar, high insulin, and really just they're having a difficult time modulating their sugar, their glucose consumption where they have bouts of hypoglycemia, they're having problems when they, sometimes when they eat sugar, they feel really sick, they get that headache, they get a wave of heat in their body. Those are things that can be affecting your body's ability to lose weight or not from a glu glu transport perspective, meaning that your body's ability to use carbohydrate is down. And when you can't use carbohydrate, we start to do very funny things with our tissues. And that would be a number four reason that you might be struggling even with food, meaning that you're saying, I'm eating well, I'm low carb, I'm keto, I'm eating high protein, I'm eating high fat, and my carbohydrates are low and I'm still having issues. It could be the organs themselves. It could be the pancreas's response to glucose. Little side note here that I wanna comment on because this is also not talked about. Anytime you have no gallbladder, you're missing your gallbladder, you have a cholecystectomy, you do run the risk of using glucose as your primary fuel source. So by default, people that don't have a gallbladder, they cannot process fat as effectively. The body says, wait, it's too difficult for me to digest fat. Let me just make the body crave carb and sugar. So people that often have no gallbladder find that they're constantly craving carbohydrate. Another thing I want to comment on, because this comes up in practice, a lot of people say, no, I'm not, I'm not craving. And then I ask them with a diet recall, a nutritional uh, recall, tell me what you're consuming. And it's filled with glucose, carbohydrate laden foods. The reason you're not craving it is because you're eating it. So you're not craving it because you're satisfying the urge. And a lot of times when I ask, no, 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 I'm not craving sugar. Women will say, no, no, I'm not craving it. And then I'm looking, they are craving it. They're just not realizing it, that their craving is not necessarily being kind of thought about because they're consuming it. So that's satisfying the urge of the craving. So just a little tip there, any issues with insulin, any issues with glucose transport, any issues with fat metabolism, like having no gallbladder, those are gonna be factors that also can stunt your ability to lose weight or change your tissue, okay? And number five, we'll leave it at number five. There are many other reasons, but these are a little bit more of the common obvious things is that you're living in a state of sympathetic dominance. You're living in fight or flight mode, which means that your body is constantly bathed in a chemical cocktail of stress hormones, catecholamines, glucocorticoids, mineral corticoids, adrenal hormones, and high levels of DHEA sulfate. Those are other reasons that even from a diet perspective, your body can't lose weight because you're basically dumping hormones that are signaling, uh-oh, we have problems here. And the body is, of course, going to prioritize that. It kind of does like triage. The body does triage where it says, what's the most important thing? If there's a fire burning in the background, you're not going to make dinner right now. It's just not the right time. And that's really what your body is doing, that by default, it's trying to preferentially choose who is the most important factor to take care of at this time frame for your specific needs. I also have to preface this. People say, well, so-and-so told me to do this. So-and-so recommended that I take ashwagandha. So-and-so recommended that I take a probiotic. That is a really crapshoot approach to tissue healing because it's not custom to you. 
It's not considering your own unique genetic profile. It's not considering your own what's called polymorphism, signal, uh, signal, single nucleotide polymorphism SNPs. It's not including your lifestyle factors. It's not including you as a person. And I always say things when people say, oh, you should take this. Please do not just go in blind because what worked for someone may not be the right thing for you. In fact, it could be harmful. There are things that people say their friend recommended, their aunt recommended that I'm like, no, 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 no. You can't do that right now. You can't do a keto diet, ketogenic diet at this time because your lymphatic system is blocked. And so if you put more fat into a clogged lymph, you're gonna gain weight from it, even though it worked for Susie Sally. So be mindful that we don't wanna go in blind. We really wanna focus on things that work for you as you are a unique person with your own set of unique genes, your own set of chemical compounds that are so specific to you. So I hope that you guys found that helpful in terms of really knowing, oh, there are reasons that are beyond my control perhaps that are causing problems with my ability to lose weight. And I do encourage you guys that if you say, yep, yeah, that's me, I definitely resonate with this, please connect with someone that could support you in a way to identify what is the factor, what is the stressor, and then come up with some strategies to get into a better place because all of it's possible. You're not, it's not written in the stars that because you have an inflammatory process or you have an autoimmune condition that you're set with that forever. No, 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 no. You didn't come into this beautiful world with all, the, all of this stress. Lifestyle factors affected that. Environmental factors, emotions, toxins, chemical compounds, mycotoxins, stealth infections, so many things were bombarded by. Nonetheless, guys, I hope that you found this helpful. If you like this video, if you like this type of content, I would love it if you subscribe to the channel. That way you can stay up to date with me and all things holistic health and wellness related. If you're on Instagram, please go follow me there. That's where I spend most of my time. Um, and there are things there that are not going to be here on YouTube. So, Hope it was helpful, guys. I will see you in the next video.